What's up my friends, welcome back with another great tutorial that I hope that you will like. Today we'll have another IoT tutorial or Internet of Things. As you all know, a few months ago we've made another IoT tutorial with the ESP8266 and the Arduino and I show you how to create the database, how to send data to that database and also how to receive data from that database and control all kind of stuff like for example relays, maybe some lights and so on. And you can do that from anywhere in the world if you have internet connection. And that's pretty much what IoT is. But that video was very very complicated and this is why. Because in the same tutorial we were sending 4 different sensor analog values, 4 different boolean values, 1 full text of 100 characters and also receiving 3 boolean values. So that made the code very very difficult to understand because it was too long. So I've decided to make smaller examples and create a series of videos about IoT with the ESP8266. Today's videos is very simple. We will make a door lock alarm. That basically means that we have a magnet and the sensor of that magnet with a hole sensor and that will send the data to the Arduino. The Arduino will send the data to the ESP8266 and that will send the data to the database. And as you can see here I have the application on my website. Each time the value that I receive is about the threshold value, I will receive a mail on my smartphone. So let's see an example. As you can see right now, the real time value is 0 and the threshold is set to 300. We could change this anytime that we want, but we will leave it like this for now. Instead of using this magnet and this sensor, to see analog values I will use this potentiometer with the same setup. So let's see what will happen if I increase a little bit the potentiometer. We wait for a few seconds. And as you can see now the real time value is 136, which is still below the threshold value. But let's see what happens if I increase the potentiometer even more. Let's wait for a few seconds to refresh the page. And there you have it, you heard the sound of my mail and if I scroll down, as you can see, I have a mail received from my website. And at the same time we can see that the real time value is 445 which is above the threshold value. So as you can see the label for mail sent is activated. So if we read the mail as you can see, we can see that on Tuesday 9th of January 2020 the sensor unit 1 overpassed the threshold value of 300 and the real time value was 300 and no 524. So the door was open. So if I go back to my website. If I lower the value once again, we will see that the real time value will go to 0. We'll wait for a few seconds. Ok, so the real time value now is to 0, so I can reset the alarm. I said reset. And now each time that I increase the value once again, which means that the door is open, I will receive another mail. Let's give it another try. I increase now the potentiometer to, to maximum. we we'll wait for a few seconds to refresh the, the website. And there you have it, another mail that the door was open with another value and as you can see once again the mail tag is set from not uh, no alarm to mail sent. So that's it, that, uh, that's how this works but instead of the potentiometer we'll use this whole sensor and this magnet and we'll see that in this video. So today we'll learn how to make the database, how to make the schematic, how to connect everything together and also we'll take a look at the code. So guys, let's get started. Hey guys, before we start, let me talk about the sponsor of this video. If you need electronic components, you must go to LCSC. They have more than 200,000 components of all kind. They have basic resistors, capacitors of course, and also basic ICs, microcontrollers, power management and much more. And as you can see on their website, they can ship worldwide, so don't worry about that. And it's even more. The price for the component will get lower and lower depending on the amount that you want to buy. So for example this STM32 is only 90 cents, but if you order 30 for example the price will be 65 cents. And another cool thing about LCSC is that it's directly connected with Easy EVA, so you can add to the cart your components while designing your PCB. So go to LCSC, place the order and receive the components very fast. What's up my friends, welcome back. In the intro of the video we have seen the analog version of this setup. Meaning that we can read the analog value of a potentiometer and send that to the database. But if I just want to detect when the door is open, I want to use a digital code. So that will send a 0 or a 1. 
At the same time, I want the Arduino and the ESP to go into deep sleep mode in order to save some power. So let's see another example with the magnet detector. So here I have a hall sensor, and on the other side I have a magnet. One part should go on the door, and the other one on the door frame. In this way, when I separate the parts, I get a high output. Right now the Arduino and the ESP are into deep sleep mode, so the power consumption is very low, with a current of only 12 milliamps. Also on the website, as you can see, the real-time value is zero, and no alarm was triggered. When I remove the magnet, the Arduino and the ESP will get out of the sleep mode, and as you can see the power consumption is now higher with a current value of 120 mA. This method is a little bit slower than the other one because the ESP must reset itself each time that it gets out of the deep sleep. But after a while I get the real value to 1000, and the alarm was triggered, and the new email was sent to me. If I scroll down, I can see the email. In the mail that I receive, I can see the day and the time, the threshold value, and the detective value from the sensor. So I can know when the door was open. Then as you can see the Arduino and the ESP will go back to sleep mode, and the current value is low once again. Now I can go and reset the alarm, and that will also place the real value back to zero. If I open the door again, the same process will repeat once again. Hey guys, let me just stop the video for a moment and make a real-time demonstration. Right now, as you can see, the Arduino and the ESP are in deep, deep sleep mode, so the power consumption is very low, only 12 mA as you can see here. But when I remove the magnet, it will wake up and send the value to my, to my website. As you can see on the website, the real-time value that I receive is zero, because the magnet is, is close to the sensor, and no alarm or no mail is sent to my, to my Gmail. Let's see what will happen when I remove the magnet. As you can see, the power consumption went up, and now the Arduino and the ESP will wake up, as you can see the blue LED is now blinking. This will take a little bit more than the other example, because they both have to wake up. But in a few moments, I get the value on my screen. Okay, so let's see. We get, we get the value in a few moments. Yes, we get the value of 1000, and also a mail was sent to my smartphone. And as you can see, the Arduino and the ESP went back to sleep mode, because now the power consumption is only 9 mA. And at the same time, I get an email to send to me. So now I will receive the mail in just a few seconds. There is, there is the mail. So now uh, if I scroll down, I can see that mail and I will read that in... Let me just scroll down. As you can see, this is the mail and it will say that today sensor, sensor unit 1 overpassed the threshold value of 300 and the real-time value was 1000, so the door was open. So in this way, guys, if from anywhere in the world you can know if anyone will open the door because if the magnet is separated from the sensor, this will wake up and send an email to your smartphone. From anywhere in the world because this is not based on a LAN connection, this is based on an internet connection. Ok, so let's get back to the tutorial. Ok, so let's see how to make this. First, this is the schematic for this project. Try and remove the LEDs from the Arduino and any unneeded resistor because that will lower the power consumption, in case that you want to use this with batteries. Connect the ESP to pin 6 and 7 for RX and TX, and use a voltage divider of 1K and 2.2K. Connect a pull-up to the reset pin of the ESP8266 and to the other end connect it to digital pin 12. Then connect the Hall sensor to 5V and ground, and connect the output to analog input A0. I've placed an LED here, so as you can see each time that I remove the magnet from the sensor, the output will be high. So that's how the sensor works. So the setup is ready. Now let's see the website part, which is quite long. So please go to my past ESP8266 video and learn how to create a free website and a database. In that past video, I've used the 000 web host, which can give you a free domain and hosting. But today I'm using my own website, electronoops.com. So you'll have to create a new database. So learn how to make that from the past tutorial you have below. I will name my database Nubix v1. Now open the details of the database. Here you can see the database name, the host name, the database user and the password is the one that you've selected. We will need these values later. 
Now open this database in phpMyAdmin. As you can see, the database is empty, so we have no tables, so we have to create one. I name my table Nubix v1 table and select 5 columns. So click next and here we have to give names to our columns. First is the ID, then we have the password, the sensor value that we receive, the threshold and the alarm status. Give the values names and the properties like I did otherwise it won't work. Now we have to insert at least one user ID and one password. For that go to insert. It can be any number that you want but with a maximum of 5 characters. I insert ID 1 and the password of 12345. Ok so now the database is ready. Now go below the video and download the zip file with the PHP files. Extract that zip file and you will have a folder with the name Nubix v1. Inside of this folder we have 3 files. Change SQL, the index and the rxphp. Open the change SQL with any software that you have for this. In my case I'm using Dreamweaver, but you could use any other free software. Ok so you have to change these values and this value. Get the server, the user, the password and the database from your own database. I copy those values from here and paste those in the change SQL file. Then change the name of the table. In my case the table that I've created was named Nubix v1 table. Ok now save the file. Now go and open the rx.php and do the same. Change here the database values. Now change the table name here, here and here. Or if you want it to be easier just use the same name for the table as I did. You should also change this email address with your email address on this line here. Now save the file. Now open the index.php file. Change the database variables again as you did before. Then you have to change the table name and save the file. So now we have our 3 files ready. Upload the entire Nubix v1 folder to your website directory, in my case to electronoops.com. So now if I go to electronoops.com slash Nubix v1 I will get the interface. If you get a database error check if the user, the server or the password are ok in the PHP codes. Ok now go below and download the Arduino code. Open the Nubix v1 code. First you have to change these lines here for the Wi-Fi name and the password. Then you have to change the domain from electronoops.com to your own domain but don't include the 3 double V's. Change that here as well but this time with the 3 double V's. Now change the unit ID and the password that you have inserted in the database table. If you remember in my case I had ID 1 and the password 12345. If you compile at this moment you will get an error. That's because the library software serial is not compatible with the sleep library. For that you have to search the software serial library on your computer. Usually is in program files, Arduino, hardware, AVR, libraries and software serial. First you have to make a backup of the folder in case that you mess it up. Then open the software seal.cpp and use administrator writes. Now search and delete these lines here. These vectors are in conflict with the sleep library. Now save the file. Compile again and you will see no more errors. So compile and upload it to the Arduino. Read the Arduino code step by step to understand more. But this is what we do. We create the URL that we will send to the rxphp file and it will contain the user ID and the password and also the sensor value. Then using the get function we send that to the website. The rest is done in the PHP file. The rx.php file receives the URL and divides it into the unit, password and sensor. Then if the sensor value is higher than D1, which in this case D1 is equal to the threshold value, then we send an email to this address. So remember to change this email address to your email. Now everything should work, let's see an example once again.
Okay guys, I promise this will be the last example, but this time I'm using the other code. This doesn't have the deep sleep, deep sleep mode, so as you can see the Arduino and the ESP are, are always turned on. And as you can see, the, the LED is blinking each two seconds. So I'm sending the data very fast. Each two seconds, I'm sending the data. So this will have a very fast response. Let's just remove the magnet and let's see in a few seconds how the data, as you can see, it already appeared on the, on the website. And now it will send a mail. Yes, a mail will send to my, to my Gmail. And if I put back the magnet, the value will change very fast from 1023. It will take change to zero back again. There you have it, so in this way it's a lot faster, but you can't use this with batteries because without the deep sleep mode, it will drain your battery very, very fast. Okay, so that's it. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and that you have learned something new. And in future videos, we'll see how to receive data from the website, not to send data from to a website. Okay guys, so I hope that you now know how to create this. You have more information on electronoops.com. You have two codes below. One is with low power mode and the other one will constantly send the data to the database each 2 seconds. Upload the one you need. In the next IoT video, we will see how to receive data from the database instead of sending data. So stay tuned for that. If you learned something new, give a like to this video and also consider subscribing. And the most important, activate the notification bell. So thanks again and see you later guys.